If you ever tested a target running WordPress, Drupal, or any CMS, you know that moment when you wish you could just replicate the exact environment locally. Same version, same plugins, same configuration, so you can break it properly and actually understand how it works before touching the real target. But here is the problem most people run into. You are sitting in front of your terminal, you type one command, and everything breaks. The database does not connect, the container won't start, or conflict everywhere and now you are debugging your own setup instead of testing the target that's waste of time and that's exactly what we are fixing in this video today i'm going to show you three things first the old painful way people used to set up testing environments with second how to make the same process clean and repeatable by docker compose and finally the game changer hostinger's docker compose manager so this is Emersec, go get your cafe ready, and let's dive in. Channel has enough content. As this is what's sick with the book. So, we all have time to do it. Big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video and making it possible. They have just rolled out something I've been genuinely excited about. A built-in Docker Compose Manager right inside their VBS dashboard. No complex setups, no random commands. You can deploy a full application stacks straight from your browser, one click away. Before we jump into the technical part, here is what you will need for this video. First, a basic understanding of Docker. If you have never used it, don't worry. Think of Docker as a way to run assaulted applications in lightweight containers. That's all you need to know. Second, a VBS. We will use Hostinger's VBS with the Docker template pre-installed so you don't have to configure anything manually. It's ready to go out of the box. And honestly, the Docker Compose Manager provides a more intuitive learning experience and allows us to experiment with containers and applications without having to master complex commands. Now that that we have covered what we need let's look at why the old way was so painful okay so as i said first thing we need is a vbs to start and i will just go to hostinger.com slash emersec and right here we have hostinger and since we are in november they have the black friday sale they have up to 68 percent off in the cloud hosting and up to 69 percent off on the vbs's and right here what we need is VBS so I will scroll a little bit down and I will see right here that we have KVM1248 I think KVM2 is good for me so I will choose it right here and right here you will see that uh, we are in the card we actually have a discount already for the Black Friday sale but here is the thing you can also get a 15% discount on this if you used Emersec 15 carbon code this will give you 15% off. So you will get the BBS with $5 per month and instead of $19 per month. And this is only works in the 24 month period for the BBS. But if it's less than that, it will not give you 15% off. Right now you can use Amor Sick only and this will give you 10% off on any other service such as a VBS with 12 months period or cloud hosting web hosting or whatever okay so right here I will just remove that make this 24 months again and right here I will select my OS right here we have plain OS Alma Linux Debian and others so I will choose Ubuntu and you can also uh, choose OS with panel such as Qualify, Cloud Panel, C Panel, and others, or you can just use an application like N8N, WordPress, etc. So I will use Ubuntu right here, making sure that everything is fine. Add the Coben code. Let me apply it. And I will purchase it and get back to you. All right, so as you can see right here, I have my VBS up and running. What I'm going to do is SSH into it. So as you can see right now, I logged into the Ubuntu server. And right now I have to ABT update and then ABT upgrade dash Y. Also, we need to install docker.io and docker dash compose. And let me hit enter. Okay, I have a typo. So this is supposed to be docker and like this. Okay, so great. Now we have everything set up. 
So let me zoom for you a little bit right here. Let's begin with how we used to do this and honestly how a lot of people still do it. What we were doing is basically let's say that we want to install WordPress. So what we have to do is run docker and what we will do is actually start running a docker command manually one by one so this one for example is docker run dash d the service name is wbdb which is wordpress database and after this the image is mysql and once i hit enter you will see that the database is started that's the database now we need to install wordpress and link it to the database and we can do this by by running another command which is docker run dash d and the name will be wb and after this we're going to link it with our database which is wbdb and mysql we're going to run this on this port and the service or the image is wordpress once i hit enter you will see that right now it is pulling the uh, wordpress from library so now if i just run docker ps i will see that right here we have wordpress running on this port so i go to my vbs copy the ip address go to new tab and add this board and see what i will get i will get a wordpress right here which is awesome but not really good because right now we have two containers manually linked manually configured and here is where it gets messy one typo in an environment variable wrong password or wrong host and everything falls apart WordPress cannot talk to MySQL and now you are troubleshooting setup <laughs> instead of just testing the target. Even worse, if you reboot and rebuild the environment without volumes, all your data is gone. So this just wastes a lot of time. And that's why Docker Compose becomes a lifesaver. So right now, let me just clear all of this. And right here, I will make a new directory called uh, world. Uh, let's say wordpress okay and i will get into wordpress and right here i will clear the screen zoom a little bit for you so docker compose fixes all this chaos and instead of running commands one by one you describe your entire stack once in a file called docker-compose.yml so let me show you right now i will bim a new file called uh, docker-compose.yml yaml okay hit enter and i will just paste this look how clean that is the database service the wordpress service persistent volume all defined here and the depends on lion making sure that the database runs first okay so right here i will just go all the way up to the boards and i will make this something like that and now I will just write this file. Now, instead of running two commands, what I'm going to do is run docker dash compose up dash d. That's it. WordPress and MySQL will start automatically on the same network. Fully connected. And right now, I will not face any configuration issues. And by the way, I can just add like restart always. And this will make the container once I restart the machine it just uh, starts automatically which is awesome and if i just want to stop everything i will write doc docker compose down and this will just stop everything done it's just that simple so that's it i can start it again everything comes back exactly as before this is clean repeatable and portable but hostinger takes it even further i mean like one click deployment right from your browser let me show you how. So right here, we don't see anything in the dashboard called Docker Compose Manager. And this is because we have plain OS. So what you have to do is go to OS and panel, operation system. And right here, I will choose application and I will choose just Docker. Okay. I will just change OS. Okay. Let me just delete everything. Okay. Hostinger took everything Docker Compose does and made it visual and instant. And this will just be great help for developers and DevOps engineers. The visual interface saved them time by allowing them to monitor container status, logs, and resources usage at a glance, and also start to stop and restart containers with a single click, and also to avoid typo and manual errors, 
that can occur when using the command line. So now you can see that the Docker manager right here in the sidebar, and instead of SSHing it to my server and typing commands, I simply manage everything from a visual dashboard. So right here for deploying your first app, you have two ways. First is composing manually or composing from URL. Right now, if I click compose manually, it will ask me for a project name and it will give me a .yml editor or a visual editor if I just want to add containers. I will not do this right now, but let me show you how can I compose from URL. So if I click compose right here, it will ask me for two things. One is project name, which is really important for you just to manage your projects. And second is the URL. And right now it needs a URL for Docker Compose the TML file. So if I go right here to the new tab and write awesome, awesome compose and just open this link, you will see right here that this awesome compose uh, repository have a lot of apps right here you can choose from. For example, let's say WordPress MySQL. And right here you will see that we have composed the TML file, which is exactly what we need. So if I get this raw file and just go right here and paste it, you will see that it have added a project name by itself. And right here, Docker Compose Manager automatically fetches the file and shows me a preview what's going to be deployed. I can see the services, ports, the volumes, everything. And once I hit deploy, watch this. Right now, it's pulling the images, creating containers, and setting up networking, configuring volumes, all automatically. That takes exactly 30 seconds. And if I scroll right here, you will see that we have the project details, we have the YAML editor right here, which just uh, got all the data. We also have the visual editor. And if I get back to the Docker manager right here, I will see we have the back end, the database and the proxy. So let me delete this right now because I don't need it. And starting with composing manually because I prefer control. Now let's say I want to spin up with a Drupal site or WordPress site. Here is from the editor. We have the YAML editor, the visual editor, and we have logs. If there is any logs, we can see it here. So right now what's going to do is I will just right here, right? For example, a, let's say WordPress. Okay. And this will be my project name. And if I go to the visual editor right here and click container, this will give me a new container. So when I add something like a uh, WordPress, the container name, the image, let's say WordPress also, and the restart policy, when I make it always, that means every time the machine restarts, it will just start the container directly. And for the port, I can add the board, the container dependency also. And you will see when I click save and get back to the YAML editor, I will see that it's added it here. But actually, let's say that I don't know how to write this. That's where Kudi comes in. So I actually love Kudi because I can't just ask it to give me anything. So I can ask it to give me a docker compose YAML config file for deploying WordPress with my SQL. Okay. And once I send this, all right, really cool. As you can see, it's giving me a complete YAML configuration right here. What I'm going to do is copy all of that and paste it right here. And right here, I will just remove the version. So if I get back to the visual editor, you will see we have the database right here, the WordPress, because we added that right here. I will click deploy. And as you can see, the project deploy. Three seconds. And I can just click right here and it will redirect me to my WordPress which is awesome. It's ready to use. I can just continue everything right here, connect it to the database and uh, I have it right here running. And here is a pretty cool thing. We have WordPress. We can also compose Drupal, right? So let me do this right here. Go to Kodi. Okay. Give me another one for Drupal and a DVWA and Juice Shop. Okay. And each one on different board and I will send this and right now it's supposed to give me configuration for Drupal, DVWA which is the vulnerable web app and juice shop which is pretty cool. I will copy all of this, get back to the YAML editor and paste all of this, remove the version completely, close Kudi, 
And if I get back to the visual editor right here, you will see we have Drupal DB and Drupal, DVWA DB and DVWA, and the Juice Shop. So if I just deploy that project deployed, as you can see, like it, it, it was super fast. We have Drupal right here on a board and we have also a uh, juice shop in another port. We have DVWA in a completely another port. And this is crazy. Right now we have Drupal and DVWA juice shop and WordPress running on the same VBS and being managed from this clean visual interface. Then vulnerable web app, Wasp juice, Drupal, and WordPress. Crazy, right? But check this out. Right here in the Docker Manager, we can manage our projects right here. For example, I can click Manage right here, and this will give me uh, like the logs. If there is anything, I will see right here. And also, if I get back to my other project, which is this one that have five containers, and I click Manage, I will also be able to see the logs right here. I can get back right here and just stop this right now because. I don't want it to be running. That's it. I'll go right here, refresh. It's down. Okay. And this also down. So if I want to run it one more time, I will hit start and it will just start all the containers one more time. Bring it back, refresh. It's up. So the crazy thing that from here I can view logs, restart or stop containers, edit config or delete all the projects. Each service shows its own status, resource usage and network info. And if I ever need to jump into the server, there is a built-in browser terminal right here that can just give me access to the terminal. So this is a game changer. No CLR, no SSH, no remembering the flags, just a clean visual Docker manager. And for the bug hunters or developers spinning up BOCs daily, this saves hours. You want to test WordPress with a vulnerable plugin? Deploy it. It takes around 30 seconds. You want to spin up a Laravel app? You can do the same. As you can see, we just deployed like five containers in less than a minute. And actually, that's why I started using that for all my lab setups. It's fast, it's clean, it's reliable, and it's just work. That's pretty much it. That was Docker Compose Manager from Hostinger. Quick recap. We started with the old Docker Run Chaos manual linking, endless troubleshooting, wasted time. Then we used Docker Compose, one YAML file, one command, perfectly repeatable. And finally, Hostinger's Docker Compose Manager, a visual, one-click environment that saves time and sanity. The point is simple, your time should go into finding bugs, not fixing your environment. If you want to try it yourself, head to hostinger.com slash emersec. And especially for emersec community, there is 10% discount when using the coping code emersec. You will get a VPS with Docker pre-configured, ready for your next hunt. So, if you found this video helpful, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more cybersecurity content. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or you can reach me on Twitter. Until next time, stay curious and stay secure.